Hello, I'm Piers Corbyn from weatheraction.com, long range weather and climate forecasters. And I'm going to give you at the end of July a summary of the situation of the climate gate debate around the world. The paper tiger of the global warmers is in very deep trouble. And what we're hearing now is propaganda in the most defensive way possible from the global warmers. I attended the Climate Gate debate at the Royal Institute of British Architects run by the Guardian newspaper in London on the 14th of July. And there, the interesting thing was, although people obviously turned up from the point of view of supporting global warming nonsense, some of the biggest applause was achieved by uh, Steve McIntyre, who pioneered exposés of the climate gate fraud, and a blogger called Doug Keenan, who was presenting and steadfastly stuck to the statement that the Climate Research Unit of the University of East Anglia had engaged in fraud. And he stuck to his guns despite threats from George Monbiot, the chair. And at that meeting, I challenged uh, uh, Bob Watson, Professor Bob Watson, who made the most insane anti-scientific claims about CO2 and the atmospheres and the climates of Mars, Venus, and the Earth. And I would uh, recommend you have a look on our website to see uh, what was said. Now, the most interesting uh, developments recently, I would say, have been the uh, Met Office and various global warmers around the world suddenly announcing that they think this could be the hottest year ever. Now, of course, it's a bit strange to measure a year when you're halfway through. Um, but they are desperate to find something to talk about because it may be they've noticed that people such as myself are saying, well, actually, later on this year, it's going to cool down around the world. But furthermore, this so-called hottest year ever is, is, well, depends on their data, which, of course, is cherry-picked data. But they uh, have been avoiding reportage of what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere, where well, we've been having record low temperatures in Peru and Chile and in Australia, where we've had the coldest for 16 years, coldest for 30 years in places there, and people dying of cold. The important thing about this month is not the heat, it's the world contrast, which were predicted by solar activity. So, you know, no one should get upset anyway about hot or cold or whatever anywhere, because we know from a thousand years of data, 10,000 years of data, indeed a hundred million years of data, that there is no controlling effect of weather and climate by CO2. What is in fact happening is temperatures, if anything, in the main control changes of CO2 or there's no relationship whatsoever. There's no way that CO2 controls weather and climate, and there's no evidence for that. Now, the uh, facts of the case mean that the global warmers will go to increasingly desperate measures to justify anything. And the most recent thing is they've been saying, oh, the thermosphere has got damaged, and more damaged than otherwise would have been damaged, uh, because of CO2. Now, of course, this is nonsense, but just to put you in the picture, the troposphere is like a thin layer on the surface of the Earth, like a piece of cardboard on a globe. And then beyond that, you've got the, uh, uh, the stratosphere and the mesosphere, and then the thermosphere, which is like a band around there. The thermosphere is very hot, surprisingly, but that end is caused by extreme ultraviolet radiation from the sun breaking up the uh, molecules. And when there's low solar activity, you get a much thinner and cooler thermosphere. And it's been very thin and very cool comparatively recently. And the reason for that is the solar activity. Now, the nonsense that's come out of the global warmers tank is something like, oh, yes, well, it would, it's got even thinner than 
it otherwise would have because of a little bit more CO2 and some complicated theory. Well, of course, it's absurd because the fact is that it's so complicated there, they can't predict anything to do with CO2. And you know, and I know, and we all know, that it's the sun which is driving that and the sun which is driving weather changes and events around the world. So the very last question is, of course, for interest, what is therefore going to happen to tropical storms and other things later this month? The answer is uh, we're, not, uh, we're not actually sure, but we are investigating exactly this matter because the, what happens in the thermosphere is definitely controlled by the sun and that in turn is causing certain weather events. So the rapid changes in the thermosphere may indeed be connected with the extreme contrast we've been having around the world. Um, uh, that doesn't mean that there'll be more or less uh, tropical storms directly, but it will have a bearing on, on the uh, incidence of tropical storms later in this year, which of course is important and something we are investigating. So if you want to know more about the climate change debate and where the weather is going around the world, please come on our website, weatheraction.com. Thank you.